As Joe Linton gets called up to the Brazilian national side, it reflects a new era of excellence for the Newcastle fan favorite. But it wasn't always like that. With a hefty price tag and leading the line for a side battling relegation, Joe Linton was thought of as an expendable commodity. So what changed? Stay tuned as we look at how Joe Linton the Redeemer transformed himself from a humongous flop to a superstar in the making. Growing up in Alianca in northern Brazil, Joe Linton had the same dream any other kid from the country would have. But at the age of 12, while riding a truck to get to a game, he tragically fell off, injuring his left shoulder, with a series of botched procedures further scarring his arm. However, he continued to play, and on one instance, shortly after his tragic accident, was the only kid selected from a total of 180 in a trial back home. Fast forward a few years and Hoffenheim came calling, signing the then 18-year-old for just 2 million euros before loaning him out to Rapid Vienna. And in Austria, things were not easy for him either, with one coach blaming him of running around like a wild chicken. Of course, Joe Linton improved like he has continued to do ever since. Two years in Austria meant that Joe Linton was much more prepared for the Bundesliga, once he became a first-team regular under the tutelage of Julian Nagelsmann. And in his final season in Germany, he scored 10 goals and assisted 8, totaling 18 goal contributions. An interesting fact was the formation Joe Linton played in at Hoffenheim. In a 4-4-2 or a 4-3-3 formation, he would always have the likes of Kramerich and Belfodil supporting him in attack both of whom outscored him at the end of the season. Hoffenheim played a pressing game, pressurizing the opposition at every transition. They encouraged their players to carry the ball and played an offensive style suited to the Brazilian Samba of Joe Linton. So when relegation threatened, Newcastle signed him with their defensive deep block. It sure would be a tough place for Joe Linton to adapt to. Mike Ashley was known for his erratic decision-making as the chairman of Newcastle United. And in the latter part of his Newcastle days, many of his calls proved immensely unpopular among Newcastle fans. The signing of Joe Linton for a club record shattering £40 million initially looked just like that. Imagine the experience of Rafa Benitez blocking a transfer only for it to be executed again in the summer, because Mike Ashley was so adamant about getting the player. Now, while understanding the decision-making of Mike Ashley could sometimes be difficult, he probably wanted a young, bankable Brazilian he could sell off for a profit later. And in the summer of 2019, the Newcastle chairman got his wish with Steve Bruce approving the deal. The deal left many in surprise, as there were hardly any contenders for this transfer but Newcastle. But Steve Bruce stood by his decision of investing in the young talent. Right after the contract was signed, all eyes were on this record-breaking £40 million new lad from Brazil. In a team regularly flirting with relegation, he was supposed to be the striker that made sure they scored enough to avoid the drop. Needless to say, the young striker already had his work cut out for him to justify his price tag. Now let us first step into the shoes of Joe Linton himself, when he was first signed and brought to the Premier League. Transitioning from the all-out attacking football of Hoffenheim to the one of Newcastle where they had a 5-4-1 formation with Steve Bruce at the helm made for an extremely tough transition. Two goals in his first season also did not help his cause. In fact, it took him 301 days to score his second league goal for Newcastle, after his first came in August of 2019. Joe Linton frequently found himself in positions where he had the ball but no one to play with, something that he was not quite used to at that moment. In addition to that, Newcastle had a very rigid and solid strategy of defending like there's no tomorrow. While players like Andy Carroll were suited to playing that style, Joe Linton was a man out of his depth, with a number 9 shirt adding to his burden. And understandably enough, the record star signing of Steve Bruce looked like a complete disaster for a good part of his early days at the club. To make matters worse, in the quarantine days, Joe Linton posted a video of getting a haircut, 
when it was illegal to do so, adding unnecessary pressure to his already dwindling Newcastle career. Add to that the fact that he was brought in the place of Rondon, who was the perfect, robust, aggressive striker who had adjusted to their style of play, Joe Linton sure looked like a downgrade. Six goals in two seasons would have meant curtains for most players with such hefty price tags. But even in that era of his apparent inadequacy, he couldn't be blamed for a lack of commitment on his part. His manager and teammates used to vouch for his hard work even in those bleak days. Sean Longstaff once commended his teammate by saying, I can honestly say every day in training, he's the best player. If he's on your team, you win. If you get Joe on your team, you're buzzing. He would spend hours and hours in training and then rewatch his own clips to identify his weaknesses and work on them. During that time, the club still had hopes for their star striker. To help his spirit, they offered to bring Joe Linton's family to the United Kingdom over the Christmas period in order to boost his mood and morale, which they thought could be important negative factors for his underwhelming performance. It would appear that the club was not quite ready to give up on him just yet. As for Joe Linton, he was a man on a mission to prove himself. He hired Roger Vieira and his Brazil-based agency Outlier FC, who would regularly analyze his game and give him dossiers and video analysis to help his understanding of his own game. While the seeds of change were set in the time of Steve Bruce, with Joe Linton working day in and day out to improve his game, the eureka moment came in the first game of Eddie Howe's tenure. In his first game in charge against Norwich, a ninth-minute red card to Kieran Clark meant that the forward Joe Linton had to slot into midfield. The Brazilian covered every single blade of grass as the crowd cheered the Magpies to a well-deserved draw, and it was the birth of a midfield engine of the highest quality. Julian Nagelsmann once described Joe Linton as an animal and a machine, and the animal was surely unleashed to redeem his Newcastle career. See, Joe Linton had found just what he was looking for. A manager that trusted him to do the business, fans that cheered every tackle of his like it was a match-winning one, and a role that suited his game perfectly. Accompanied by some extraordinary work on the training ground, Joe Linton proved he could lock horns with the best midfielders in the division. It was later revealed that during his Newcastle interviews, Eddie Howe specifically mentioned Joe Linton as a player who was underperforming and who he set out to improve under his tenure. Diego Vieira also commented that Joe Linton had a style of play perfectly suited to what Howe wanted. Vieira's team specifically analyzed footage from Howe's time at Bournemouth to further help Joe Linton transform himself into the ideal Eddie Howe midfielder and his infectious energy on the pitch, strength going forward, and ability to retain the ball in tight areas was perfect for the football Eddie Howe wanted to play. The instructions were suddenly clear, and the player was blooming under the right nurturing. The 40 million pounds spent on a striker suddenly meant Newcastle did not have to buy a box-to-box -box midfielder in their new look side. Quite serendipitous, isn't it? While Eddie Howe will rightly get a lot of the credit for turning the fortune of Joe Linton, the work done by Roger Vieira and his team at Outlier FC has also been central to his growth. And as Brazil add him to their squad, the coaches are sure to love his energy from midfield. After all, one thing's for sure. The feel-good story of Joe Linton is anything but over. With impeccable fitness and an exceptional attitude, he is sure to progress further as he enters the peak of his career at 26. The Tyneside faithful are in for quite a ride. <laughs>